your presence, Lord, is worth the wait, Lord. I don't mind waiting. One more time. Lord, you you're worth the wait. You're worth the wait, Jesus. Don't mind waiting. On you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Let's stand as we sing just a closer walk with thee. to walk with the Lord this morning. Let it be, Lord. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk with me. Grant to Jesus that if you please. Let's go back a little bit this morning. I'm 
Sheldon, do me a favor. Don't sit down. I'm, I'm going to help you all out this morning. Sheldon, keep playing that. Um, it's, it's, it's not real full in here. Um, so for you all, you are going to be happy today. I'm about to play musical chairs so you all can do something and feel comfortable. Um, I feel like it's too close on this side for what we about to do. So I'm going to ask people who don't mind moving. I'm going to ask Rhonda. Rhonda, can you, whatever, whatever seat, whatever the last pew in back there, Rhonda, that you can take, go ahead and go to that pew. Tammy, I'm going to ask you to go on this side right here. Wherever the red tape is. No, wherever the red tape is, Ron. Wherever the red tape is. And then, um, Jennifer, I'm going to ask you. Tammy, can you go all the way over? And then, Jennifer, can you go right on that seat? On that one, please? It's, not, it's a lot of room. So you all about to do something that you have not. No, go all the way right, right where you are. Go back one more, one more. You all about to do something that you have not done in 60-some weeks. Amen. Because we got enough room. And I feel as though the amount of spray that will come out being that we are all masked up will be at a limit. I'm going to give Sheldon about a minute and 30 seconds. Amen. And you all can participate. Amen. In the singing of the selection this morning. Come on, say just, say just a closer. Just a closer. Walk with me. Usher, Usher police over here. Cindy, I'm going to ask you to go over there in that row where Rhonda is, all the way to the end, please. I'm spacing out. I'm spacing out. I also need, it, I also need to be heard this morning. Um, for those of you who are listening on Facebook, for those of you who are listening on Zoom, for those of you who right now are members of the Best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road, and you say, man, I should have been there this morning. Okay, so if you come next week and we don't do this, it'll be because it's still a little too crowded and we don't feel comfortable. But right now, we got enough space. Does everybody feel comfortable this morning? Amen. And if Amen. it felt good, can we just give the Lord a hand praise Amen. this morning? Amen. 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 That shows that we are that much closer to being almost back to normal, and it's just good to know that God is still in control. Yes, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something else for y'all. I'm going to just change the whole service. Sheldon, play something everybody know and just let them sing. All right, y'all going to get it all out this week. Just play something that they know. Let them sing so they can feel good. Um, make it something that they all know without words, and just get it all out. Y'all been hanging on to this singing for 60-some weeks, um, and now we're going to make sure that y'all are able to do some of it. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's have a little church. Oh, can't nobody.
And believe me, if you all are happy, trust me, the musician is even happier than all of you. (laughs) To finally get some call and response and be able to hear it. Amen. 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 Can we look to the Lord this morning in prayer? And then we're going to have the announcements. And then we're going to have a selection. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you all is I'm about to sit down and you all just remember where you fall in place. So we're going to have a prayer, announcement, selection, scripture, and then a song. And then I'm going to preach and then we're going to go home. Everybody got that, right? Amen. 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 Can we pray? Can we pray? All wise, all loving, and all knowing God, we come this morning as we have on so many occasions. Lord, just to simply say thank you. Thank you, Father. But Lord, we come this morning even feeling better because we were able this morning to literally make a joyful noise and be heard see lord for all these weeks we've been singing in our souls and our minds and in our spirit but this morning we got to make some joyful noise for the lord so we just want to thank you for being in control lord and and knowing just what's best so lord right now as always we ask that you simply remove everything and anything from our minds that would stop us from giving you all the honor and all the glory this morning. Yes, Lord. We, Lord, Lord, we ask that if there be somebody somewhere who just doesn't know about the goodness of the Lord, that you allow us, if we come in contact with that individual, yes, God. to simply look at him or her and say, if it had not been yes, Lord. for the Lord who was on my side, where or where, would I be? Lord, we thank you this morning for each and every one of us who have assembled here in this place. Yes. We thank you for each and every individual this morning who is listening or watching on Zoom and Facebook. But more than that, we just thank you for allowing us to understand that even if there's nobody in your house, We can still come in and feel the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for those who stood in an empty building all those weeks and still did everything we could to tell somebody about a man named Jesus. Lord, Lord, we thank you for how every single week you wrapped your arms around us and kept our hurt, harm, and danger away. Yes. But, Lord, now we thank you as we begin to slowly get back to what was normal as in being able to come in. But we thank you even more for this new normal yeah. yes. that is about to happen. Yes, Lord. See, Lord, we understand that the message will still be the same. But the way we send it out and give it may be just a little different. So, Lord, right now, we thank you for everything you have done. We thank you for everything you're doing. But, Lord, right now, we just send out a hallelujah for everything that is about to happen. Thank you, Lord. Not only in this place, but in churches all over, Lord, where people are just coming back and running in and wanting to know somebody, let somebody know how good you've been. Yes, God. Lord, we thank you for every bad time. Because, Lord, without the bad time, yeah. we wouldn't have been able to get to the good time. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for every storm because thank in you. the midst of the storm, yes, Lord. we felt your presence right there with uh, us. Thank you, God. But right now, Lord, we ask that as we go through this service, that you allow all of us to move ourselves out of the way. That you allow us to come in and meet you. For Lord, we know you were already here when we w- walked in. So let's get rid of everything. Let's move everything. And let's just think about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And when we come to an end here in this place of this service, Lord, we ask that you allow us to leave in a better place, in a better condition, in a better mood, yes. feeling better yes. than when we came in. Yes. Lord, I just heard us all sing, I feel better, so much better, better. (laughs) since I laid my burden down. And Lord, I just pray that not only 
do we lay them down and did we lay them down? But now that we laid them down, we let them stay there. Yes, Lord. Yes, and Lord. allow you to take over and take yes, control. Lord. Lord, we thank you for that last night's sleep and slumber, but we thank you more for allowing us to get up this morning. Lord, we may have felt some aches and some pains. We may have come in this morning and seen that maybe things weren't the way that we thought they should be, but we thank you for allowing them to be just how you want thank them you. to be. Thank you. So, Lord, right now, use each and every one of us in this service. Allow us, Lord, to give everything that you've given us. Allow us to make a joyful noise. Yes. Allow us to lift a hand. Yes. Allow us to clap our hands. Allow us to pat our feet. But more than that, we just ask this morning that you allow us to remember that God is a good God and God is worthy to be, to be praised. So this morning, as we close this prayer, we simply say, Lord, we give you all the glory, yeah. all the honor, and all the majesty. In the precious name of Jesus, who is the Christ, let all God's children say amen, amen, amen. and amen. Come on, let's pray the Lord this morning. Let's do some good hallelujah chanting this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it with me. Say, oh, say you are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Church. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll pray your name. I'll praise your name for you are Alpha and Omega. Yes, you are, Lord. You're the beginning and the end. Say so you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name one more time. I'll praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. Yes, you are, Lord Jesus. And you're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, and I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Say hallelujah. Holy, holy. Your 
Now put your hands together and bless them. Hallelujah. Testament lesson we'll be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. Therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body we are away from the Lord for we live by faith not by sight. We are confident I say and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, That's right. so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, right. whether good or bad. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. For, can we all stand for our gospel reading? Yes. Gospel reading will be coming from the fourth chapter of Mark, verses 26 through 34. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, okay. night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, right. all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, uh -huh. then the head, right. then the full kernel in the head. Mm -hmm. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. Uh -huh. The parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall, shall we use to describe it? Okay. It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Mm -hmm. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. Right. Which such, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can we go back just a little bit? Back to the old church. We used to sing songs like, There's a bright
the bright side. Amen. Amen. There is a bright side, a bright side. somewhere. Um, this morning, this morning, we are going to look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament, uh, going into the book of First Samuel, starting in the 15th chapter with verse 34 and reading all the way all the way to the 13th chapter of excuse me, the 13th verse of chapter 16. And I will be reading the message version of this and it reads this way Samuel left immediately for Ramah and Saul went home to Gibeah Samuel had nothing to do with Saul from then on though he grieved long and deeply over him but God was sorry he had ever made Saul king in the first place God addressed Samuel so how long are you going to mope over Saul you know I've rejected him as king over Israel Fill your flask with anointing oil and get going. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've spotted the very king I want among his sons. I can't do that, says Samuel. Saul will hear about it and kill me. God said, take a heifer with you and announce I've come to lead you in worship of God with this heifer as a sacrifice. Make sure Jesse gets invited. I'll let you know what to do next. I'll point out the one you are to anoint. Samuel did what God told him. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the town fathers greeted him, but apprehensively is there something wrong nothing's wrong I, I've come to sacrifice this heifer and lead you in the worship of God prepare yourselves be consecrated and join me in worship he made sure Jesse and his sons were also consecrated and called to worship when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, here he is, God's anointed. But God told Samuel, looks on everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. Uh, Jesse then called up Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. Samuel said, this man isn't God's choice either. Next, Jesse presented Shama. Samuel said, no, this man isn't either. Jess, Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel. Samuel was blunt with Jesse. God hasn't chosen any. Of, the, of these. Then he asked Jesse, is this it? Are there no more sons? Well, yes. There's the runt. But he's out tending the sheep. Samuel ordered Jesse, go get him. We're not moving from this spot until he's here. Jesse sent for him. He was brought in the very picture of health. Bright eyed, good looking. God said, up on your feet. Anoint him. This is the one. Uh, Samuel took his flask of oil and anointed him with his brothers standing around watching. The spirit of God entered David like a rush of when God vitally empowering him for the rest of his life Samuel left and went home to Rama uh, the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God thanks be to God I I personally personally believe there is not one single person sitting here this morning who has ever enjoyed being picked last for something. 
Uh, we, most of us, I, I, I think we all know how it goes, or for some of us, how it used to go. In, in school, during gym, maybe the weekend, or summer was here, and now was the time for our pickup games. A captain was chosen for both teams, and it was his or her job to choose their teams. Anybody else but me re remember this? A amen, amen. Um, we would all stand there hoping and praying. We would be picked quickly and not near the end because in society's mind and opinion, uh, picking last meant you were no good. But this morning, I am here to tell us that that's not the way the Lord works because there are times when it comes to being chosen by the Lord. And for a thought, I want to use three words that came from that seventh verse in that 16th chapter. Looks on everything. Looks on everything. Now, now before I, I get to explaining that, let's, let's look at what's happening in our text this morning. We, we now find the Israelites have their king, a man named Saul. The Israelites complained because they wanted a king. Because Samuel was now an old man whose sons did not follow in his footsteps. And, and besides that, every other nation had a king. So they felt they deserved one too. Got to keep up with the Joneses. Amen. And, and so in the text for the morning, that, that king is a man named Saul who, who just happened to be a handsome young brother. And, and who literally stood head and shoulders above the crowd. If you want to know anything else about him, you can read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. It's in the book. Amen. Amen. And although this was the manner in which the Bible describes him, I, I stand before all of us this morning and stand here for those of us who are listening or watching, suggesting that there are times when how we look goes to our heads. Uh, the way in which others feel about us begins to make us think we are more than what we really are. Um, see, there are some people today who are extremely excellent in the positions and places God has placed them. Notice I said they're excellent in the positions God didn't say where they got themselves, but they're excellent in the place and position that God has placed them. H however, it, it does not necessarily mean that was the way they began. Um, for those of us who know um, Air Jordan, um, it, it says that he got cut from the basketball team. Now, now, I thought for a while it meant that he got cut, period. But he just happened to get cut from the varsity to the JV. Um, for those of you who may not like this person, um, there's another person named Tom Brady. Several rings. But he didn't get picked until the sixth round. Whole lot of other people, but looks on everything. Uh, even some of our presidents, according to society, have been terrible. But I personally believe if they are in a position, it is because they are who the Lord needs at that moment. Uh, see, unfortunately, our good friend Saul got too pumped up in and on himself. Saul forgot who really was in charge. He began to let the people be more important to and for him than the Lord. So let's quickly look at the fall of Saul. The fall of Saul. If we would have read the chapter from the beginning, we would have read how Samuel told Saul what God had to say. God instructed Saul to go and kill and destroy Amalek and Everything associated with Amalek. Those were the instructions and I've come to a place where I now realize when God says to do something, we ought to do it exactly the way God tells us to do it. No detours or deviations. However, just look at us at times. Uh, uh, Saul decided to do things a little differently. And, and so Saul decides to capture Agag, the king of Amalek, alive. Everyone else was killed. Everyone else was killed. 
under the terms of the holy band. But Saul and the army made exceptions for Agag and for the choice sheep and cattle. And unfortunately, to make matters worse, when Samuel came to him, Saul actually believed what he had done was okay. He actually thought the God he served was pleased with him. He actually thought everyone who came his way should be worshiping the ground he walked on. But here comes good old Samuel. Ah, uh, see, Jason, I, I believe there's always, there always has to be somebody in our group, in our clique, who can keep, bring us or keep us planted. Oh, there are times we get so pumped up on ourselves that somebody has to put our feet back on the ground. Samuel approached Saul and said in so many words, what in the world have you done? Uh, why do I hear the bleeding of sheep and the mooing of cows? See, when God said everything, he meant everything. But, but here comes Saul and his explanation. You know, we always got a reason and an explanation of what we did. But, but no matter what, every time we mess up, we truly believe we have a good excuse and a good reason why we did it our way. Can I get a witness this morning? But, but there are times when the Lord is involved that his way is the only way. To be saved, my Bible simply says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Those are the instructions, Rhonda. That's what it says. It doesn't say anything about speaking in tongues. It doesn't say anything about getting in a dance or falling out or even kneeling at the altar for a week. It says humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. So, so now God is fed up with Saul because he's put his trust in man and not the God of all creation. It's now time for a new king. And God tells Samuel to go to Jesse of Bethlehem because that's where the next king is located. Samuel really doesn't want to go because he's concerned about what Saul might say. But God gives him instructions and Samuel does not object. Oh, Samuel sends word ahead. He's on his way to Bethlehem. And as God told him, he made sure Jesse knew. Now, now, my Bible doesn't say, but if it's okay this morning, uh, Sandy, I, I'd like to add a little something. See, see, it says when Samuel got there, I, I'd like to think that those who were in attendance had prepared themselves properly. Amen. See, he told Jesse he was coming. This wasn't a surprise visit. You all know how we do it. It's, it's uh, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 14, 17, 19 of us in here right now. No, I'm sorry, 21. Um, but if on Tuesday, Jason, we would have sent a, a, an email out saying that the former president of the United States was going to stop by the best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road, there wouldn't be one empty seat in here and all of y'all would be dressed amen to the nines. That's right. That's right. Um, even better yet, if I told y'all he coming next Sunday, y'all would rush up out of here, get home, get your clothes out now when you know usually you don't get them out till Sunday morning. Y'all be on them telling everybody don't touch that. You can touch everything else in here, but don't touch this. I got to wear that next week. Well, I, I thought you weren't going back to church till October. Well, I'm going next Sunday. I will deal with that when the time comes. And for those of you who thought you did not find anything, you would be making your way out to the store. Jason would be digging deep, Jason Jr. Because Sandy would be like, ain't nothing in this closet that's good enough for me to wear next Sunday. 
Mr. Melvin, you and Miss Regina would be shopping. <laughs> Tammy, Madison, Denise, Shelly, we sure enough wouldn't be dressed like this at all. <laughs> at all. Because we would know somebody was coming. But to and for us, looks are sometimes everything. See, Samuel goes on to explain his purpose on being in Bethlehem. And now, let the show begin. For in the crowd stood Jesse and his sons. And Samuel knew the next king was about to be before him. But it's good to know this morning looks on everything. See, all Samuel was looking at was what he could see. However, God was looking at what no one can see. In other words, God was looking on the inside. So, so I imagine as Jesse had his sons pass before Samuel, Jesse was sure one of his sons would definitely be the one. After all, they were probably all dressed up, looking good. But I got some news for all of us this morning. When it comes to being anointed and appointed by God, there will be times when we won't have time to clean up. But that won't matter to God. So imagine how Jesse felt after seven of his sons had passed before Samuel only to hear Samuel tell him, nope, not him either. See, God had already told Samuel looks weren't everything. And just because it looks good on the outside doesn't mean it's good on the inside. I, I got to stop there for 30 seconds and just talk to the brothers. Imagine brothers, if you will. You know how we are when we're younger. Amen. Looks. But just because it looked good. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep going now. So, so as, as everyone stands around amazed because no one has been chosen yet, Samuel looks at Jesse and asks, is this all? Do you have any more sons? Jesse says, yeah, yeah I got one more, but I don't think you want me to bring him up here because he out there tending sheep. In other words, he wasn't dressed to the nine. He was tending sheep. And besides, he's no more than a runt. Uh, do I have anybody here this morning who people wanted to leave out because you were tending the sheep and you were no more than a runt? Uh, Samuel told Jesse, I think you ought to send for him. Uh, Jesse had already decided surely David, his youngest son, could not be the one God was looking for. Oh, but what Jesse didn't understand was no matter how things look to us, when we come and stand before God, God can perform an extreme makeover. I need to know, do I have anybody in here who, under, who underwent a, a makeover to do the work God had for them? So, so along comes David. David steps up. I can imagine him coming out of the field now. He was probably a little tired. Remember they said he was the runt. But it also said he was a handsome brother. I, I can imagine Sheldon, he was just coming up like, I don't know why they call it me. I'm just trying to take care of the sheep. I got to say that again because I need us to understand it. They were coming to look for a king. But they left one out who was tending to the sheep. Isn't it good to know that there's one who was tending to the sheep but didn't think it was his time? Says when he got there, uh, they looked at him and said, that right there, he's the one. Now imagine, they were all dressed up. He probably had grass stains, dirt stains, smelled like sheep. But isn't it good to know when it comes to God, it doesn't matter how we look, what we smell like, God can make a way out of no way. I'm about to sit down 
But I'm going to talk about some personal stuff. There's this place that we come to on Sunday mornings called church. And there's some people, because of what we used to do, who think, actually, when we come in, we got to put on our Sunday best. But I'm so glad I serve a God that whether I got on my Sunday, my Monday, my Tuesday, my Wednesday, my Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, what God has in me will always be in me. See, I've come to understand whether I got on a three-piece, a two-piece, or casual wear, I still got a song in my heart and a praise on my lips. Sheldon, I'm glad to know that there have been some folk that other people have stepped over because they were in the gutter, but God picked them up, cleaned them off, and allowed them to sing a song yeah. that the angels can't sing. See, I think there's some preachers, there's some musicians, there's some lay servants, there's some ushers, there's some choir members. In fact, there's some church folk who should not be where they are, who should not be who they are, because some people looked at us, turned their noses up at us, and said, surely you will not amount to anything, but along comes God. And imagine how good it feels when everybody that thinks they ought to get the position, when everybody thinks they ought to be in charge, uh, as they walk by, they said, no, you can keep moving because you're not it. And then they got to number 100. That was way in the back, was dirty, didn't smell right, didn't walk right, didn't talk right, didn't sing right, didn't preach right. Them. wasn't from the neighborhood and they stopped and said you the one I need you to come up to the front because you about to come on and tend to the sheep David was in the field tending to the sheep but now God had needed him to come into the kingdom and tend to the sheep how many of you thought that your sheep were there but really God had a different sheep for you to begin to work with and the real good thing is when you do it God's way Everything works out just the way it should. I'm not here because it doesn't happen in the Best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road. But the one thing I've come to understand in my uh, almost 14 years now ministry is the conversation always changes when you look like a preacher. Let that sit in. See, if I want to be able to meet the people where the people are, I got to be able to look like the people, talk like the people, walk like the people, sing like the people. See, it's good to be able to sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. It's good to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's good to sing um, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. But every now and then, you got to be able to turn on the secular station that it doesn't say anything about Jesus and still know regardless of what comes out of your mouth you still know who saved you regardless of what station you turn on you still know who made a way out of no way see I, I used to not understand this thing as much and then I began to listen to it for myself Sheldon and I began to understand that almost any song that comes on the radio you can find Jesus in the midst I'm not going to do that today for you Denise but I'm going to come in here one day and I'm going to show you all how you can almost take any song and relate it to Christ. But just so you understand what I'm talking about, think about the individual who comes to the church, grows up in the church, knows Jesus for themselves, and then goes out and does everything. In fact, let's think of talk about the, uh, the, the prodigal son. The prodigal son went out to a foreign land, had a good time, and then came to his senses. Imagine, if you will, as he was coming back to his daddy, that he was walking down the road and earn peaches and herb came to his mind and he simply said reunited and it feels so good see I need y'all to know when I really need Jesus it's good to know I can turn to other songs besides the ones in the book the hymnal is great but every now and then we got to allow people to meet Jesus where they are see we can sit here and sing all of them because we know all of them we understand how hard our ancestors worked. 
We understand what it means. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But every now and then, um, I, I need y'all to know this isn't mine. I, I actually took this from um, Bishop Love. That's who I heard it from. And he, he's got a wonderful YouTube. Listen to him sometime. He'll sing all the songs for you. And you'll be like, oh, that's incredible. Um, but, but the one thing he wanted people to know is it all depends where your mind is. Because if your mind is right with God and you tuned in just right, again, you can take any song. Any song. But for my last example, it's not a song. And I need to let you know this is not my story. I got this from my pastor. Um, because the title of this was Looks on Everything. And uh, they were at a, 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 a chorus, uh, uh, one of them song fests for gospel choirs. And Melvin, all the choirs came up and they were dressed to the nine. They were singing their hearts out. People were just clapping. Oh, this is wonderful. And then there came what you like, Melvin, a quartet. Down from the country. None of their clothes matched, but they walked on stage anyway. Said everybody in there began to laugh at them. Because after all, look how they look. They not dressed like us. You know, didn't they realize that they were coming to sing and give God glory? See, that's the part they didn't understand. They weren't coming to look good for you. They were coming to sing and give God glory. Said the individual stepped up to the microphone said that by the time that quartet finished singing wasn't a dry eye in the place said hands were lifted and folks got happy in the spirit see i'm glad and my prayer is that we come to a place where we don't judge christians by how they look because if that was the case where would some of us be? I, I need to be real honest now, because maybe I am talking about somebody in the Best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road. Denise, I believe some of us get dressed up to try to fake folks out. Well, you can fake folks out, but you can't fake Christ out. So you can dress yourself up all you want. You can spray on all the cologne you want. You can put all the weave in that you want. You can get your hair did every week if you like. But if your heart, mind, soul, and spirit isn't right with Christ, you're just going through life being a chameleon. And for those of you who don't know, a chameleon is one who can step into any situation and fit right in. I want to be the kind of Christian that's not ashamed or afraid to come to Jesus just as I am without one plea. I want to be able to come to him whether I'm clean or I'm dirty. I want to be able to come to him whether I'm dressed up or dressed down. I want to be able to come to him whether I'm rich or I'm poor. I want to be able to come to him whether I'm happy or I'm sad. Because the one thing I know is Jesus is the kind of Jesus that will never leave me nor forsake me. And if he could love a wretch like me, then that means he met me. When I was at my lowest, my dirtiest, my stinkiest, my most messed up state, and still thought enough of me, looks on everything. See, sometimes we dress up to make people think we've got everything going on. But inside, we're a total mess. So the next time you contemplate how you need to look when you go out because you're just trying to keep up with the Joneses. Think about Daniel. A kid that was out in the field tending sheep. A runt who initially got looked over because his father was like, surely I know they don't want you. But isn't it good to know that God looks beyond our faults and sees our needs? This morning, if you don't know this Jesus we talk about, this Jesus we sing about, this Jesus we preach and pray about, we ask you to simply lift your hand if you're in the building. We ask that if you're on Facebook or Zoom, type in something in the chat or leave a comment and let us know you want to know this Jesus that we talk about every Sunday. And we will gladly get in contact with you and find you a home, even if it's not here. We'll find you a church home somewhere so that you begin to be nurtured, so that you can begin to be discipled. But more than that, so you can know this same joy that we know. And the good thing is every day is not a good day 
There are going to be some days when you cry, but I've come to understand that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Before we leave here, um, I was so happy and excited that I forgot to do one thing, and I have to tell you these announcements. So you just listen up real quick. Um, the food giveaway will be every third Friday. June is Black Music Month. This month also, we will be having our Leon H. White Scholarship, Metropolitan's High School graduates or continuing college students. Applications for the Leon H. White Scholarship are available upon request. The deadline for applying is August the 10th. If you don't do anything else, write that down. The deadline for applying is August 10th. Please contact any committee member listed below for an application. Rhonda Bell, Gwendolyn Churchill, Gertrude Daly, Gloria Grady, Loretta Matthews, and Jeanette Thomas. And if you don't know any of them, just send an email to the church and we'll make sure that they get it. Amen? Amen. The other thing is, as always, before you leave, those of you who are in here, you know we have seven ways to give. So for those of you who are going to give before you leave, remember we have a basket out there. Or you can mail it in. You can use our cash app, which is dollar sign 548 capital M as in Metropolitan, lowercase UMC. You can pay using your personal bank or you can pay through PayPal or Givelify. The other thing that I would like to say before we leave here this morning is thank all of you who participated in our Double Good Popcorn Fundraiser. Um, we give God all the glory. We give God all the glory this morning. Um, this was our first thing that we have done since the pandemic started, so therefore we are so thankful for the, for the good things that God has done. Again, I say eyes have not seen nor ears heard what God is about to do here in this place. God bless you. May heaven continue to shine and smile down upon you. We love you just as God loves you and there's not a thing you can do about it. See you next week, Lord willing. <laughs>